conditions. I'm just asking you to have a conversation. Sir, get with out of here before I call the police. For what? Right, For what? It hasn't been two hours. You said you were going to give me two come hours. If you to this office again, I'm calling the police. Okay, I've asked you to get out of my office. Right. Because, get my, get because my, I simply asked you oh, to provide yeah, me power. No, because you're threatening me that, oh, I'm going to go ahead and do this on YouTube. I'm going to do that on YouTube. You know what? Go ahead. Okay. You're entitled. Hi, guys. Is that crazy or what? In case you're new to my channel, I'm Gordon. Um, and this is Roaming with the Ramses. My wife, Alice, will join us later. Um, but I would have never expected to be treated like that by an owner of a KOA or an owner of any business. Typically, most owners and most managers believe in customer service. I'll explain exactly what happened and how we ended up at that point in a little bit. But I think first you need to know some of the details about what got us there. So... I've been full-time in an RV for over a year now with my wife. We have a 42-foot Keystone Alpine. It's a 2020, and it's a 50-amp. Now, the only surge protector that I have ever recommended on my channel is the Hughes Auto Transformers Power Watchdog. I think it's a great product. I use it, I rely on it, and I trust them as a company to do the right thing. On Amazon, they have almost 1,500 views, and it has over a four and a half, almost a five-star rating. So it's a good product, and it's well-respected amongst the community. So some of the things that the Power Watchdog Surge Protector protects our RV and the electric items in our RV from are things such as low voltage, 104 volts or less. So if the voltage is reading say 105 it will still allow that power to come to the trailer but as soon as that power drops below 104 volts on either line one or line two it will stop the power coming to the trailer to prevent any damage to electronics or the trailer now while doing some research for this video i did find an article that i will certainly link in the description below the article was on rv life and was titled, Low Voltage in Your RV, Don't Let This Happen to You. And one of the first things that that article talks about as being problematic for with low voltage is the compressors for your air conditioning units. Um, if you try and run your air conditioning units with low voltage, that can cause a serious issue and can blow your compressor because your, pressor's your compressor is going to be running hot. And if you're not using a surge protector and you have low voltage, you'll never know. Your air conditioner is going to continue to run when that voltage dips down. And it's going to continue to try and run. It's going to run hot. And then it might just burn itself right out. Now another thing that the power watchdog protects my trailer and stuff inside my trailer from is high voltage. 132 volts or more. And it will block power coming from the pedestal to the trailer. Now it also has things like line one or line two overdrawing amps. So if you have something that is drawing too much amperage and the circuit breaker at the pedestal doesn't pop it, the power watchdog will stop letting that power come to the trailer until you correct that. And then of course it will tell you if you have a neutral reversed on either line one or line two, whether you have missing neutral or missing ground. So it's like eight different things that the Power Watchdog protects my trailer and the contents inside my trailer from damage from electricity. And when you think about it, you're, you're talking about, you know, computers, microwaves, refrigerators, TVs, all things that have a fairly high ticket value on them and that are not easy to replace, such as air conditioners. Hi guys, I wanted to show you exactly how it looks looking at my Hughes Autoformers Power Watchdog and the readings I get. Currently I have just about all the electronics off in the RV. No air conditioners are running, my dehumidifier is not running, TV's not on. The only thing that should really be drawing much power is just the refrigerator and a few other things in the background. And currently on my line one, it's reading my voltage at 121 volts and my amp draw at 6.6 .6 amps. 
and then on line two it's reading the voltage at 122 volts and the amp draw at 0 0.7 0 0.8 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to slowly turn on each of my air conditioners and explain and i'm also recording the screen on my phone right now so i'll be able to drop that in so you can see it and you'll be able to see exactly how i'm able to determine the effect of an air conditioner and things with regards to power draw and was able to determine that they had a problem with their power at the koa park and that it wasn't a problem of mine okay so the front air conditioner which is my smaller air conditioner is now kicked on and it's drawing 121 volts and the amp draw is now at 13.8 13.9 line one and that was on line two so line one is still drawing 6.7 amps and 121 volts so now i'm going to turn on our primary air conditioner and the fan on both of these air conditioning units is on high okay so the primary air conditioner just kicked in the fan started up it's going to take a little bit for the the pump to kick on okay now the pump just kicked on and it's currently drawing 18 point 19.3 amps still has 121 volts okay so the next thing i want to turn on for you is my dehumidifier we pretty much almost always run the dehumidifier especially when we're in humid areas so i'm going to turn that on Okay, so currently on line one, I have 121 volts, 19.5 amps being drawn. On line number two, which is the line we were having problems with at the KOA, going below 104 volts, I have 120 volts currently, and I'm drawing 16.8 amps on line two. All right. Now the microwave. Everybody knows the microwave is a beast when it comes to devouring power. I'm going to go ahead and hit a start on a 30 second cycle. Alright, so now on line number one I have 121 volts, 19.6 amps. On line two I have 119 volts. 29.8 amps notice that my power watchdog is not kicked in to try and protect my trailer because of drawing too much power and the circuit breaker at the panel didn't act because i was trying to draw too much power i think it's pretty clear that it wasn't a problem with my surge protector and it wasn't a problem with my rv it's a problem with the koa's power that's the issue is their power is probably an old system that wasn't designed for the types of trailers that it's trying to support now because we had most of our problems close to the weekends during the middle of the week when there were fewer campers in we didn't have so many problems but as a thursday or a friday or a saturday came around and the campground was full our problems were almost non-stop we couldn't even run both air conditioners at the same time let alone both air conditioners a dehumidifier and a microwave okay so now that you've seen how well the power watchdog works at reading that power coming into the trailer i want to explain to you how we got to what you saw during the first 30 seconds of this video which is the owner of the park yelling at me and threatening to call the police on me and kicking me out ultimately is what he did uh, with only a two hour window for me to move in so shortly after alice and i first got to the koa in bangor holden maine 
probably day three or day four, we had a problem with our power. A problem that we'd never had. Our power and our trailer has never gone out as a result of over voltage, low voltage, over amps, anything like that. Never happened. We've lost power because of storms, but that would only be it. So during the about the third or fourth day, we had a power interruption. I got the alert on my phone from my power watchdog telling me about a low voltage issue. So Alice went up to the office and talked to the person in the office and let them know about the problem. And about 10 minutes later, a young man by the name of Anthony, I believe, came to our site. He had a list that he said he was provided by the campground to go over with us explaining how much power use certain things could have and how it could be that we're using too many items in the trailer. I of course explained to Anthony that I understood all of this and that I've been full time in my rig for over a year and a half and I've never had issues with power before and then I felt it was an issue with the park power. So he took a volt, he took a meter to the pedestal because I had already unplugged both my trailer and the watchdog and he turned the circuit breaker back on at the pedestal to try and use the meter and check the power at the pole. While he was checking the power at the pole, it sparked. And I believe it fried his meter because when it sparked, he couldn't do anything any further. He said something to the effect of, well, that's not supposed to happen. I gotta go tell the boss and see if he wants to send the electrician over because there's an electrician who lives in the campground and he occasionally does some work for the campground that he and the owner have some sort of arrangement. I said, fine. We're going to leave the surge protector and the power unplugged for now. Um, and probably 15 minutes later, I noticed the power came on. I had no idea why the power came on. So I went outside. Nobody was there, but my watchdog was plugged into the pedestal again and the power was on. My neighbor happened to be sitting outside. Um, told me, hey, yeah, I just saw somebody pull up, looked like they had some sort of a voltmeter in their hand, looked like he tested it, and then he plugged you back in. I was kind of bewildered because I would have thought the electrician would have wanted to talk to me and find out what the issue was. Didn't happen. So we continued to have a little bit of problems, but not much. And then a few days later, on Thursday, our power had gone out like five times. I called the office, spoke to a, a young lady there, and I explained the problem to her, told her my site number. She told me we don't currently have anybody available to come check it, but I'll get back to you and let you know what the outcome will be. I said, fine and thank you. And we canceled our afternoon plans that day because I wanted to be there when the electrician came out so I could explain to him what was going on because I had been using my um, watchdog app and I had been screenshotting the low voltage as the voltage would drop. I can only get to 105 because when voltage goes below 105, the watchdog interrupts the power coming to the trailer to protect it. So I will include all those screenshots in the video here as well to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, line one seemed to be working pretty well. Never saw any real major drops in line one. However, line two is the line that would continually drop and barely ever ran above 108, 110. Um, so I wanted to explain all that to the electrician. Nobody ever showed up that night. So those were Thursday's problems. So on Friday, after Alice got off at work and we went out for our afternoon of sightseeing around Acadia National Park, we came back to the trailer to find out that our power had shut off. So Friday, I went to the office to talk to somebody to see if I could get some help. The owner, Chris, was the one behind the counter. He was helping somebody when I first walked in. I waited until he was done helping them I started to step up to the counter to have my conversation with him. The phone rang and it was somebody canceling their reservation. When Chris got off the phone, he asked, how can I help you? 
And I said, hey, yeah, I called yesterday because I've been having problems with the electric at my site. And um, I had at least six interruptions with my electric service yesterday. And I was told that somebody would either come by or I would get a follow-up phone call. I never did. He asked, well, what site are you at? And I said, site number 22. As soon as I said site 22, he started getting very angry and started telling me that I sent the electrician out there the other day. My electrician says everything's fine. And I told him, I said, well, your electrician's wrong. And I pulled my phone out and I was going to the screenshots that I had been taken of the power watchdog to show him the low voltage. And he got very agitated now. And he says, I don't want to see it. I don't want anything to do with it because those things are all crap and they're garbage, that plastic junk. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was saying, those things you plug into the pole. And I said, you mean a surge protector? He was like, yeah, that's junk and it's a piece of sh sh I won't say the word. You know. So I was like, I don't think you're right. And I said, if you just look at the pictures, you can see that it clearly shows my power watchdog is a constant meter for the electricity that's going. And your electrician didn't test the circuit while it was under a load. He just tested it with no load. Um, he didn't want to watch. He didn't want to look at any of the photos I had taken. He wanted nothing to do with the conversation. And he said, the only thing I can do for you now, and this was very loud, just like the video you watched at the beginning. The only thing I can do for you is give you a refund and you can go. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you can leave the park. And I was like, I just want the thing fixed. And he's like, no, you get a refund and you can leave. And I said, look, just look at this. I just want to show you this. He totally refused to look at it started yelling, I'm going to call the police if you don't get out of here. You need to go now. I've asked you to leave. You need to go. I'll give you a refund. Get out of here. You got two hours. I was like, for what? He's like, because I said so. Get out of here. The whole time he was yelling. He's not talking like I'm talking now. He was yelling. Um, so I left. I walked out and I started thinking, you know, as I'm just leaving the door, I'm like, you know, this is not professional and I need to try and resolve this because one, it's Friday and it's like 530 in the evening on Friday in Maine, close to the coast. So the likelihood of me having a place to go with my trailer is pretty slim, but so be it. So I decided to record that video that you saw and in the hopes of having the phone held about right here to record him that it would change him and calm him down. He used to be a police officer, and a lot of people will tell you that when you tell somebody you're interacting with that you have a body cam and, you're what, and they're being recorded, typically it will change their behaviors. Not always, but sometimes it does. So I was clearly holding the phone in front of me so he could see that I was recording him. I found him in a room, not that I had to look very hard because as soon as I walked in the door, you can hear him. Watch the video again, you'll hear him. He's loudly explaining what happened to some female employee who had walked into the building as I was walking out. I round the corner to talk to him. I say, I just wanna have a discussion. And as I'm trying to say, I just wanna have a discussion, he starts yelling and screaming. You already saw it, so I don't need to explain it. Now, what I will explain is at the end of that video, he was like, you were threatening me with YouTube this and YouTube that. Well, when I was trying to get him to watch or to look at the screenshots that I had of the low voltage issue, and he refused to look at the screenshots and was telling me he was kicking me out and I had two hours to leave or he was calling the police. I said, well, then you're leaving me no choice but to do a, a, a video and review your park and this behavior on a YouTube video and to leave you a bad rating on your website. And so that's the only threat. Maybe I was wrong for saying that, maybe not, but honestly, I believe that you need to know about this park and this specific owner. Now, I don't hold KOA, the big company, responsible for this at all. Each individual KOA is individually owned and operated However, I did send an email to KOA and included the video of Chris yelling and screaming 
along with several um, comments in the review section about Chris having similar issues with them to Big KOA and said, this is an individual who's representing you, KOA, and your brand. He's proudly wearing your KOA shirt and colors, and he's treating his customers like this. So what I want, what I also did is I went back to the review section to start looking at the reviews. I want to read you a couple of the reviews that I found, and most of these reviews are recent, and you can still go to the webpage today and find these review there. On July 10th, a four-star review, mind you, KOA had a problem with the ground in lot 96 which we stayed on. Our AC did not work and had to call a serviceman who spent over two hours trying to find the problem. Finally asked if we had a generator and we did. Started it up and AC worked fine. By the way, we moved to another KOA in Lebanon, Maine. Our AC works fine. Okay, so this one I thought was very interesting because this one has a campground response. I believe Chris is probably the ones uh, making the responses to reviews on their website, but I'm not certain. So the review is a one-star review done on June 29th, 2021, and it states, on our second day there, the internet was not working. I called the office twice and was told that they would send someone to reboot the Wi-Fi. When no one showed, we walked to the office to ask how long it would be before the in internet was up. Chris immediately started yelling that he was tired of dealing with entitled people. Now keep in mind, Chris called me entitled at the end of that video that you saw as well. There was no calming him. He continued to scream at us. We left terrified. The campground response when you called the office, we did reboot the internet. When you came into the office, we were dealing with an issue involving the police. You had the nerve to ask how long that would take. We offered you your money back since we could not make you happy. You stayed another day, 19 days. Real terrified. Does that sound like an appropriate response that an owner or a manager should have to that kind of a review? And then one of my favorites, the, another one-star review, June 24th, the park needs a make over the electrical wires are not underground in some sites, place is not well kept, will not return to this KOA. And the campground response was, we are sorry that you felt this way and are about our park. If you look at our other reviews, you will notice that your opinion of our park is not shared by others. If you were so severely dissatisfied, you should have come to the office to speak to us instead of waiting to slam us in a review. So what kind of a response is that one? And this person, whoever it was that left that review, is lucky they didn't go into the office to try and discuss it with them because I'm sure they would have wound up getting yelled at the same as I did and the same as that prior person did. Okay, here's a one-star review, July 6, 2021. So this was just a week or two before Alice and I were there. Lack of professionalism. Office error in dates of stay when reservations made. Staff booked two date ranges rather than same dates for both sites inadequate and unsafe electrical work. Found electric box completely charred inside after an electrician attempted to make us feel ignorant. Sites very small with overly helpful staff trying to dictate where to place our camper within the site. So there was no campground response to that, which I'm surprised. But again, that's like three people in the month of June and July who are reporting problems with electric at that KOA and the owner 
is completely ignoring their complaints and chastising them for having a problem with it. And then when a customer like me, who comes in trying to show him proof that there's an issue with low voltage, all she wants to do is yell and scream and kick me out. So after I had left the office under the threat of the police being called against me and being told a two hour window to get out in, I went back to the trailer. I explained to Alice what had happened and she wanted to know about the refund. I didn't know anything about the refund because I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about it. After everything that was going on, the refund was the last thing on my mind. We decided based on what had happened between Chris and I, that it would be better for her to go in and have a conversation with Chris, get the refund before we packed up and left because we wanted to have that issue closed out before we departed the campground. So now I'm gonna have Alice sit down in the hot seat and explain what happened to her when she went there. So hi guys. Um, so yeah, I was actually quite taken aback um, by the way that he responded to me after I told him what side I was in. Um, and you know, he starts yelling at me and he told me that I needed to control my husband. And I said, well, excuse me. I said, we've been married for 34 years and, um, I haven't controlled him yet and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> and, um, I also said to him, I says, I said, look, Chris, I did not come in here for you to be yelling at me. All I need is my refund. So if you can just process my refund, I will be out of here. Well, he continued yelling at me. He said that she's not aware that we have video cameras that have audio also. And I said to him, I said, Chris, I'd love to see those videos and listen to the audio because I'm sure that you are the one who started all of this by what you've just done to me. Uh, so yeah, it was, um, it was, not a very good situation at all to to be in when all I did was just walk in to ask for the refund um, at, you know when I after I left and I was thinking about it I wish I would have taken my phone with me um, to record what he had done to me uh, because it was totally uncalled for very unprofessional and being a manager for all of the years that I was a manager, I could never imagine treating anyone uh, the way that I was treated by him. And so, yeah, so not a good situation. I did get the full refund for the time that um, we left and um, everything is fine with the refund at least. He's good with did that. It, did it finally go through? No, it has because not gone know... through yet. Because today is what, like five days today now? Today is Tuesday. It was processed on Friday night. Today is Tuesday. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of days, I should be receiving that refund. Um, and But right now, I, it has not processed through. Alice and I did make it out in the two-hour time frame. And we did find a RV park just three miles down the road that luckily happened to have an opening at least for some of the time we still had in this area um, because we were still supposed to be at the KOA for 10 more days. We were only able to get five days here and then we're going to have to move on to our next location in Maine. It did have some impact on our overall trip and stay in the Acadia National Park area because there's just nothing else available in this area right now. Um, but the very next day on Saturday, we got up, went back to Acadia National Park, had another great hike, and just, you know, made the lemonade. We just made the lemonade out of the lemons. If you look at the playlist over here, you'll see my typical video is more about hiking, RV living, and the RV lifestyle in general. But again, I felt that it was necessary to get this information out to you the viewers so you could make an informed decision of whether or not you wanted to patronize this specific KOA.